Rare was a developer that left an incredible mark in the 3D platformer genre. While Nintendo may have established the rules with Super Mario 64, it was Rare's output that dominated the scene afterward. Classics like Conker's Bad Fur Day and Banjo-Kazooie games left an unforgettable impression on gamers ever since. Inevitably, some of the gamers who grew up playing the games Rare would make would become game developers themselves. Like most indie game devs tend to do, some would try to recapture that magic they experienced by throwing their hat into the ring and trying to figure out how Rare did it. Over the years, there have been many cute mascot 3D platformers that try to emulate the distinct look and feel of a 90s era 3D platformer. And cribbing from Rare is especially common, but so few indie developers have come as close as Dinosaur Byte Studios' efforts. Making a nostalgia bait game can easily lead to disappointment. How does this time-traveling rabbit and monkey duo fare? Find out in this Clive and Wrench review! There are no mistaking Clive and Wrench's influences. This is a game that proudly wears its inspiration on its sleeve and thankfully has enough imagination of its own to make it stand out. While its premise is as standard as it gets for a mascot 3D platformer, Clive and Wrench has enough character to not feel generic. Clive is a rabbit with a rugged pair of shorts, a yellow cap, and a backpack. You would think that he would be sued into oblivion by the current rights holders of Banjo-Kazooie, but he's more likely to be slapped with a lawsuit by the Nestle Corporation. Clive has a striking resemblance to Quickie, the Nesquik bunny. He has more of an uppity and brash personality than the soulless food mascot and is more likable due to his oafish nature. Wrench, Clive's little buddy, also resembles a food mascot. He resembles Coco, the Coco Krispies monkey, but is way less obnoxious and is much dumber. Most of the designs of the characters look like mascots one would see on the sides of cereal boxes, frozen kids TV dinners, or on the casing for a pack of sugary drinks. It gives Clive and Wrench a kitschy 90s charm that tickles nostalgia nerve endings. Wrench is a slow-witted chimp and serves as Clive's means to batter foes. He is also swung violently like a helicopter for gliding. Beyond this, Wrench is rarely used for anything else. He does not have the range as Kazooie who could sprint or launch eggs from her throat or anus. From the start of the game, Clive has access to all of his abilities. He can do all the N64 platformer classic maneuvers too. The side jump, the long jump, crouch high jump, mid-air hover, etc. Clive doesn't have to concern himself with unlocking anything, and the game is quick to set players loose on exploring 11 worlds to collect tokens and stopwatches. Every world is littered with crap to collect, and it taps into the lizard part of every gamer's brain to seek and explore. You'll want to collect them because the only way to access the stage boss is if Clive has acquired enough arbitrary collectibles. Regretfully, the stages open up linearly and players won't be able to advance to later stages even if they've acquired enough watches and tokens. The order in which the boys can access the stages may be stifling, but the real fun begins when they're set loose inside. Clive and Wrench's stages are very imaginative, but with some instances of indie jank. The overall layouts and designs of the stages are wonderful, and they're varied with platforms and gimmicks to engage with. Some things appear only once and never again, which makes them feel very unique. Clive and Wrench is all fun in games until you play it. This was a sound concept on paper, but the execution is very half-baked. There are severe inconsistencies with the hit detection when attacking, and there's an overall lack of polish in the mechanics. It always feels like there's this small chance of an attack not properly connecting. Compounded with the very poor audible feedback, Clive's abilities don't have the appropriate crunch. The issue also extends to buggy animation, which sometimes fails to work. There will be many instances of Clive sliding along the floor in a standing pose. He will sometimes maintain this position even when jumping, and then snap into position for the last few frames. Physics for objects and enemies also tends to spaz out and go ballistic. Smacking a foe will sometimes make them ragdoll. Other times will make them freeze into a standing position. If you're lucky, their models will break into agonizing looking poses or be launched into the heavens at neck snapping speeds. Clive and Wrench rarely feels like it is running on all cylinders and feels more like it's held together with scotch tape and is powered by a hamster on a wheel. Sometimes it's a sputtering mess with hitching and sound effects that are frequently missing or just too loud. Dinosaur Bytes Studios knows what N64 Rare games look like. The inspiration is clear as day, but they did not apply the same understanding of the concept to the execution. Clive and Wrench does not look like an N64 game, but more like how a Zoomer thinks an N64 game looked like, but never played anything before PlayStation 3. The result is a mess of an inconsistent texture quality and clashing art assets throughout the entire game. A keen eye might even notice the suspicious-looking store-bought assets that get recycled at every stage. These elements stick out and are more detailed than most of the other pieces of geometry. 
3D models and scaling are also wildly incongruent on many levels. In stages like the Great Pyramid or the fantasy-inspired stages, the models are passable. The stages where there's oversized props that don't match with the rest in the respective level are where it sticks out like a sore thumb. Amid all the bugginess and flaws, Clive and Wrench is undeniably charming. It's attractive in a used sock kind of way, where you know what you're going to get and it feels good to wear. It isn't so unpolished that it isn't playable, and its personality and soul manage to shine through. There's a lot of amusing and bizarre references through the various and sizable worlds that it's hard to not be drawn in. The level design, thankfully, is also varied and full of hidden areas. At times, Clive and Wrench does feel like a rare game because of the level design, not because of the aesthetics. When Clive and Wrench works, it's possible to get a glimpse of something that's a very close approximation of a quality 5th gen 3D platformer. In its current state, Clive and Wrench is rough around the edges and requires patience to contend with its less refined qualities. With more finesse and more time in the oven, this could be a cult classic.